Greetings, ladies and gentlemen. I don't think you realize how big of a day this is, but we are talking about logarithms today. Logarithms. Logarithms. Wow. You don't even know how big this is. Back in, like, the days that logarithms were discovered, these were maybe as significant as the invention of the computer, where they were extremely powerful. All right, logarithms are this thing, right, where... Well, actually, imagine you were a scientist back in, like, I don't know, the the scientific revolution, and uh, you're tracking... Let's say, like, you're Johannes Kepler or someone like that, and you're tracking, like, the movement of planets, and you're trying to, like, figure out what path they have, right? So you're working with numbers that are literally astronomical in size, and you're multiplying, and you're doing all sorts of stuff... And it takes a long time because you're doing this work by hand, right? So not the most efficient way. And multiplying two really large numbers, it's not fun. And then having to do it over and over and like having that be like the work that you do most of the time, yeah, it's a lot of time wasted. Logarithms came along and they are very, very powerful. They can change multiplication into addition. They can change exponents into multiplication. And it like downshifts everything by one degree of complexity. And as a result, astronomers were able to do math a lot quicker because it's easier to add big numbers than it is to multiply them. Right? Because just for adding, I mean, even within a multiplication problem done by hand, you end up having to add like, you know, a lot of rows of numbers anyway. You know, so if I could just change the whole thing into addition, it'd be quite helpful. So logarithms are quite powerful. And one of the things that they're effective for as well is solving equations uh, like the one that I think I mentioned yesterday. What if I wanted to solve 2 to the x equals 3 to the 4th and I wanted to find out exactly what x was? Logarithms will allow us to get a variable out of an exponent. Like I said a moment ago, logarithms can change exponentiation into multiplication. All right, so that's going to allow us to solve for this x. It could also answer a question, say, uh, if I invested uh, $1,000 into an account and I wanted to, if I was earning, um, let's say, like, uh, that'd be 50%, 5% interest over T years, and I wanted to figure out, at what point is that $10,000, right? Logarithms would allow you to answer that question, which maybe would be valuable. I don't know, because that'd be like money, and maybe, maybe you find money important. But uh, we're not going to get quite into these abilities of logarithms just yet. We're just going to try to introduce ourselves to the idea of thinking about logarithms. And... The way we're going to do that is by relating them to exponential functions. And it turns out logarithms are the inverse of exponential functions. All right? So this is what logarithms look like. Uh, If I have an exponential function and then a logarithmic form or a logarithmic function, Uh, This is what they would look like. Uh, So suppose I have the exponential function uh, 2 to the third equals 8. In logarithmic form, you would write that as log base 2 of 8 equals 3. All right. So let's just point out some similarities here. So 2, this is the base. And in the logarithm, this is referred to as the base as well. So that's kind of nice. But notice that in a logarithm, right, here's our exponent. And in a logarithm, it's equal to an exponent. Okay, 
Uh, and as I said a moment ago, this is read as uh, log base 2 of 8 is 3. So that's how you read that out. But what it is asking, so log base 2 of 8, what it means All right, is 2 to what power is 8? I guess I could end that in a quote since I already started it. Right, so 2 to what power is 8 is what log base 2 of 8 asks us. And notice the answer to that question is 3, because 2 to the third power is 8. All right? So it's just kind of a, a rearrangement of things going on here. Um, so let's write some other examples in this, uh, in this form. So if I have uh, 2 to the x equals 3, that would be log base 2 of 3 equals x. All right, so line up the bases first. And by the way, the base is written in like tiny font and is a subscript, whereas like exponents are right superscripts in tiny font. So that sort of thing. Like kind of like the 2 in O2 in chemistry, perhaps, is what you could think about that as. Uh, or let's say I've got... Um, what if I have uh, 10 to the third equals 1,000? What would that look like in logarithmic form? Log? Well, in this case, what's the base? It's the 10. Yeah, so log base 10. Of 1,000 equals 3. So what does that say? That log base 10 of 1,000 asks the question, 10 to what power is 1,000? The third power. All right? And actually, whenever you have logs in base 10, that turns out to be the standard type of logarithm. All right? And that you could have written as log of 1,000 <coughs> equals 3. So, uh, in the land of logs, 10 is the hobbit, right? Where if it's not written as a base, it's implied uh, base 10. And in fact, on your calculator, uh, when you want to do a logarithm, your calculator only works in two bases. Uh, the one that we're going to work with for now is base 10. The other base uh, is actually base base E, that's right, letter E, the number E, more specifically, uh, which we'll learn about a little bit later. But yeah, so if I wanted to figure out log of 1,000, um, there's the log button right there, log, and then I would just do of 1,000, and you could close those parentheses and hit enter, and notice I get 3. And so that said, that meant log base 10 of 1,000 equals 3. And to verify that, is 10 to the third equal to 1,000? Yes, it is. Yes, it is. Right, so that all works out there. Um, so, uh, let's see, let's do a couple others. What if I have, uh, what about 9, oh, I'm in the wrong color, blah. 9 to the 1 half equals 3. How would I write that as a logarithm? Log base 9. Log base 9 of 3. So not to the... The 3 is actually the full size font. Um, and later we will actually have exponents above that. So we will have to save the language of the to the for later. 
Um, so log base 9 of 3 is a half. And does that make sense? Is 9 to the 1 half power 3? Yeah, yeah it is. Because right, the 1 half power is going to be square root, stuff like that. Um, what about this? What if I have uh, 5 to the negative 2 equals 1 25th? Hmm. <laughs> yep. Equals negative two, and good. And we're getting the language right now, so that's what I want to make sure that we can communicate, so that other mathematicians of the world would understand us. So log base five of one twenty fifth equals negative two, and right. What is log base five of one twenty fifth? mean or what does it ask us? It says 5 to what power is 1 25th? That's equal to negative 2. All right, all right. So, uh, so that's kind of our first introduction of logarithms. Um, let me actually talk about some limits of logarithms. Uh, some stipulations, perhaps. Definition of a logarithm. Do, 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 do. Yeah, conditions that apply. Here we go. A logarithms. Oh, def log. Definition of log logarithm. So there's some stipulations that we'll talk about in a moment once you have this written down. So notice that uh, it says suppose b is greater than 0 and b not equal to 1 for n greater than 0. There is a number p such that, wow, lots of stipulations. So log base b of n equals p if and only if b to the p equals n. All right, so that's kind of what we'd said earlier. But let's consider what this means. So b has to be greater than 0. Uh, so the little base of the logarithm cannot be negative. Uh, the reason that's true is this base right here, if this was negative, uh, and I'm raising it to an exponent, the sign of my stuff is going to change all over the place. I think we saw this a little bit yesterday in exponential functions, where the base couldn't be negative because, right, when it was even, it'd be positive. When it's odd, it'd be negative. Uh, so it would just kind of screw things up. So there's that limitation. Also, they say b cannot equal 1. Uh, because 1 to what, right, like 1 to any power is it's just 1. That's kind of an uninteresting case. And they said that uh, n has to be uh, greater than 0. Let's see. Did we have any n's greater than 0? All of our n's greater than 0? Yep, n's was this and all of the of's. Yeah, so you have to take your of's being greater than 0 and... Uh, that would be true if I required my b's to be positive, so that would have to be true as well. So you can't take the log of a negative, and the base of a log can't be negative or 1, is what's going on there. So, so that's the actual definition of it. Now I also said earlier that it is uh, the inverse of an exponential. Um, actually, I might... Mm, I'll, go, I'll get into that in a moment. Let's just solve some equations. Let's do some examples. 
solve. So what if I have log base 9 of x equals 3 halves? And I want to solve for x. So what we're going to do, uh, some of the time, you can solve merely by rewriting this in exponential form. Now, we were writing all of these from exponential to logarithmic. Um, how could I write this in exponential form? So from log to exponent. So here's the base. So I know my base is 9. So 9 to... Right, 9 of that 3 halves power equals x. So that's solved for x. And what does the 3 halves power mean? Uh, well, that means the square root of 9 cubed. So that's 3 cubed or 27. Let's do another example. What if I've got a uh, log base 4 of 64 equals x? So in this case, it's already solved for my variable, but maybe I don't know how to evaluate that log. And like I said, I can't plug in log base 4 on a calculator. Uh, so I can't just plug in like log base 4 of 64. It doesn't really exist on a calculator. So I'd have to be a little bit smarter. So I don't know, maybe let, let's try to rewrite this in terms of an exponential function again. Um, so the base is 4, so what does this mean? 4 to the x equals 64. And now this is kind of like one of the ones we solved the other night. Uh, where if I could write both of those in terms of the same base, I'd be able to do some work. It turns out that's the same as 4 to the third, so therefore x equals 3. Now you might have been able to figure this one out uh, by looking at it and just asking the question of what that log meant. right? So log base 4 of 64 means 4 to what power is 64, and you might have been like, oh, the third power, I know that. Right, and then, then you would have been pretty good. So that's the other way you could have done it. So let's consider the graph of logarithms. Let's see. Uh, let's graph y equals 2 to the x. So we did this yesterday. And I said a moment ago that the inverse... Uh, of an exponential function is a logarithmic. Now, I don't think we... No, 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 we did do inverses. Aha, that was this class. I remember. Do you guys remember how we found the inverse of a function? It's been a little while. Well, maybe we'll come back to that in a moment. We'll come back to it. But if I make my table of values of x and y... Uh, Right, negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, 2. Uh, plug in negative 2, 2 to the negative 2 is 1 fourth, uh, 1 half, 1, 2, and 4, something like that. So the graph, I'm going to fit another table right over here in a moment. Uh, so the graph of this, uh, I guess I'll try to label this a bit. Um, one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Do, 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 do. Do, 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 do. So if I graph these points, negative two a quarter is small. Negative one a half, not as small. Uh, zero, one, one, two, and two, four. And here's our exponential function, right? Yeah, that was kind of a sloppy curve, but it'll do. So if I want to graph the inverse of this, does anyone remember how the graphs of inverses were related to the original functions? Yeah. 
they were mirrored over the line y equals x. So the inverse of that should look something like this, theoretically. Well, let's actually find that for sure. So it was all about inverses were, were all about switching the y and the x. So the inverse of this, algebraically, would be switching the y and the x. So that would be x equals 2 to the y is the inverse of that. How do I write that in logarithmic form? Of x equals y. Right, or y equals log base 2 of x. All right, so that's the inverse of this exponential function. Now, if I wanted to find some points uh, for the inverse, since it's all about switching the x and the y's, all I'd have to do is switch these x's and y's. one-fourth, negative two, one-half, negative one, one, zero, two, one, four, two. And if I switch all those x's and y's, all of these should be true for this logarithm. Let's verify. Uh, let's, let's test real quick just one and zero. Is log base two of one equal to zero? That means two to what power is zero? Oh, sorry. Yes, two to what power is one? That's what I meant to say. And the zeroth power, yes. Or uh, 2 to what power is 2? 2 to the first power, right? 2 to what power is 4? The second power, right? Uh, 2 to what power is a half? The negative first power. So, so this is, in fact, true with this logarithm, right? These points do, in fact, represent it. So let's plot them, and I will have go over a quarter down to... Go over a half, down one. Go over one, and then not up or down by anything. Over two, up one. And over four, up two. And notice I do in fact get my logarithmic function. And it looks something like that. So, uh, we talked about the domain and range, I think, of exponential functions a little bit yesterday. Uh, what is the domain of the logarithmic function limited to? What are the possible inputs of a logarithmic function? Can't equal zero. Yeah, it turns out it's actually vertically asymptotic. Wow, that's, that almost sounds like an insult. Like if you called someone vertically asymptotic. I don't know. I don't know what that would mean. Uh, and also it can never equal the negative. So I would say x is greater than zero for the domain. What about the y values? Well, it goes down to negative infinity. And this actually does keep increasing forever. Uh, and it does go to positive infinity. So there's no limits on the y. y is just everything. And notice regarding the domain, my values of x for this logarithmic function. Notice that agreed with what it was up here. Um, for the values of n, right, my of in the logarithm has to be positive. So that does seem to uh, tend to agree with what we had. All right, I think I've got a couple more. We'll see. Uh, maybe. All right, we're doing pretty good, though. Uh, let's do a couple examples. Evaluate.
what if I wanted to figure out what is log base 3 of 5 to the third equal to? Or, I did that wrong. Last. Because, yeah, that wouldn't be quite right. Eventually, we'll be able to evaluate that just fine. What if I wanted log base 3 of, of 3 to the fifth? What is that equal to? And now, one of the things we could do is set it equal to x and then rewrite it in exponential form or whatever. But let's think about what this is asking. So this says, what does this mean? All right, this says 3 to what power is 3 to the fifth? So what would you say that would equal? 3 to what power is equal to 3 to the fifth? The, the fifth power, right? Like, it's kind of like a redundant question, isn't it? So 3 to what power is 3 to the fifth? The fifth power, right? If I wrote that in kind of an exponential setup, I'd say 3 to the x equals 3 to the fifth. And you would have said, oh, guys, x equals 5. We know that one, right? And then another somewhat of a puzzling setup. What if I have 6 to the log base 6? So this is an exponent. This log is an, an exponent. Log base 6 of, uh, let's say, 4. So I've got an exponent that is a log. So what does log base 6 of 4 mean? So 6 to what power is 4, right? That's what that means. And I don't know what power you would raise 6 to to get 4. It exists. There's some number that you could raise it to. I'm guessing it's less than uh, 2. Actually, it's, it's less than 1, even. Because 6 to the first power is 6. 6 to the 0 is 1. Somewhere in between there. However, it doesn't matter. Because 6 to the what power is 4? Is some number. And what happens when I raise 6 to that power? What do I get? 4. Alright? So, I don't know if you guys follow that. That's a little bit weird train of thought. But, raise 6 to the power of which when you raise 6 to it, you get 4. Like, it's kind of like a weird nested redundancy there, right? So, I'm raising 6 to the power that when I raise 6 to that power, I get 4. So, it must equal 4. It's just kind of weird sounding, right? The other way I think about it is, uh, let's say uh, log base 6 of 4 is equal to, like, apple. So, here's my little picture of an apple. Do, 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 do. There's an apple. Uh, there's an apple. There we go. Right? So 6 to the apple power is 4, according to that. So what happens when I raise 6 to the apple power? I get 4, right? I'm actually pretty pleased with my apple here. Right? Like, I'm raising 6 to the power that I get 4. Like, it's just kind of a weird little setup. So that's the idea. Um, so those are some interesting little simplifying ones you can do. I mean, I could write a rule for those if you really wanted, um, but you don't even have to write these down. So I could say log base b of b to the m is equal to m. And I could have described this one as being uh, b to the log base b of m equals m if you want, I don't know, two little properties. Those are kind of amusing maybe, I don't know. And then check out this next property. Uh, this one's like an equality property of logarithms. Uh, if I have log base b of, let's say, x1 
and that's equal to log base b of x2. What do you think that means? What could we assume? Then x1 does what? Equals x2. This one is symmetric to the property we had yesterday. Where I said if I have right some exponent raised to uh, power and it's equal to the same base raised to another power, the two powers must be equal. It's really the same idea. And this allows us to solve some equations with logarithms. Do a little bit of work with those. And I might just boil this down into one last example. Yeah, oh, perfect. What if I've got log, or I'm solving this. I guess I'll give directions. Solve a. Suppose I've got log base 10 of t squared minus 6 equals log base 10 of t. And actually, since those are log base 10, technically you don't have to write the 10, right? So, uh, if I've got two logs that are equal, then their ofs must be equal, right? The logs are equal, their bases are the same, so their insides must be the same. So I can immediately just say t squared minus 6 is equal to t. And then I've got a quadratic, so I'd set it equal to 0 and solve it. t squared minus t minus 6 equals 0. And I think this is nicely factorable. 1 and 6, 2 and 3, which of those subtract to be 1? Uh, so 2 and 3, right? Do, 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 do. I think I sing a lot more now that I have kids and their toys sing all the time. I don't know. It just happens. Uh, let's see. It'd be plus 2 minus 3, right? And when I'd set those each equal to 0, I'd get t equals negative 2 and t equals positive 3. However, do those work in the original problem? Now, if I plug negative 2 in here, negative 2 squared is 4. 4 minus 6 is a negative number. Eh, eh. And if I plug negative 2 in here, it's a negative number. Eh, eh. I can't take a log of a negative. Right? No log of negative. That just reminds me of like the Charlie Brown cartoon when Snoopy was walking around and there were signs that said, No dogs allowed. And there was like some whole song about no dogs allowed. No logs of negatives. I don't know. I don't know, guys. I don't know what I think. I don't know why I think crazy things. But uh, t equals 3 is just fine. 3 squared is 9. 9 minus 3 is positive. And if I plug 3 in there, that works. So t equals 3. It turns out I only have one solution. That works. Oh, boy, oh, boy. Uh, so uh, I think that is a lot about logarithms. It takes a little while to adjust. They're different, all right? And you really haven't learned a new operation in a long time. I mean, you learned exponents maybe maybe 6th or 7th grade, or like square roots and cubed roots maybe back then too. I don't know. But uh, logarithms, you haven't had a new operation in a long time, right? So we've got now like addition, subtraction, multiplication, division, exponentiation, and logarithms. Pretty good stuff. All right, world, goodbye.